Okay, everybody, once again, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Al Koritz. I'm the Applications and Service Manager here at Electron Microscopy Sciences. I'm hosting today's uh, webinar. Uh, the presenter for today's webinar is uh, Dr. Gary Greenberg. He is the creator of the EDGE 3D fan focal microscopy system. This week's uh, focus will be on industrial applications. Go ahead and uh, take it away, Gary. Thank you so much, Al. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, as Al said, today is our focus on industry. And what we're gonna talk about is pan focal microscopy. So what is pan focal microscopy? Edge 3 pan focal microscopy is a plug and play accessory and it converts your 2D microscope into a 3D image analysis system. Um, it gives confocal like results at a fraction of the price because it's an upgrade for your existing 2D microscope. It's compatible with almost any light microscope. It can be reflected light, transmitted, fluorescence illumination. It can be inverted, upright, or even a stereo microscope. So almost any type of microscope um, will be compatible with this system. It's easy to install. It consists of the prior scientific focus drive and the Edge 3D panfocal software, which gets installed on your Windows 10 computer. Um, so basically, this is an old, this is a picture of an old 20-year-old uh, Olympus microscope, and you can see we've, there's a camera on top, and what we've done is we've added the focus device right here to the fine focus, and so now we are set up to automate Z-focus stacking. So once the computer is downloaded, or the computer software is downloaded, then it takes control of the camera, the focus, and allows you to do the Z-focus stacking. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, you can see the focus moves the stage up and down. So you can do it by slide, by this slider, or you can do it stepwise. You can put in 10 microns, it says right now. You can put in five microns, 20 microns, whatever you want. And then you can click it up and down, or you can do the focus by the um, mouse wheel, uh, on your the wheel on your mouse or on the keyboard arrows. Uh, so right now we're focused on the top of this specimen, and this is a this is a, a die cutter, a little tiny die cutter. Um, so you set the current position at the top, and then you focus the specimen down to the bottom, of the, or you raise the stage so you're seeing the bottom of the specimen. Now that was 750 microns, and you can see that the um, focus position shows you that you've moved 750 microns. Then you tell the computer what the step size is. So in this case, we're going to do 30 micron step size. Step size is really dependent on the depth of field of the lens you're using. Right now, we're using a 4x lens. Um, and then you tell it, or it automatically tells you the number of steps. And then all you do is you click this button that says take a stack, and then in about 15 seconds, there it is, it's all in focus. So now you can see the 750 microns basically all in focus. So how would you publish the results? Basically, you publish the same way you would like, you would publish uh, as confocal microscopes do. And the most used or typical way that uh, publications are done is by the reconstruction of the Z-stack. So what this is, it's essentially a two-dimensional representation or projection of a three-dimensional object and that can be easily published. Also, one of the unique things about the edge confocal system is it creates a color depth image. So in one quick image, you can see the X, Y, and Z scale. So on the left-hand side is the Z scale. It's 750 microns from the bottom to the top. The blue is the bottom. So everything that's colored blue shows at the bottom. Everything that is green and red and so forth comes out of the picture toward you. And the bottom scale, very easily shows you the X, Y dimensions. All This is all in, in uh, microns. Now, if you put on your 3D glasses, uh, it also, if you happen to have your 3D stereo glasses, put the 
the, the red on your left eye, you'll be able to see this in stereo. And it shows you how powerful the human brain is. It, it really allows you to very, very quickly understand the specimen or the world in 3D. You can also do a surface profile, and this can be turned in any direction uh, just with the click of the mouse. You can see um, a surface profile from pretty much any direction. Or you can create a 3D uh, rotational movie link. And what this does, this can be presented as a link, uh, let's say if you're writing a paper, it can be presented as a link that you can get on the internet, or you can present this in, in your uh, seminars or your talks so that you can show people 3D very easily without the need for glasses. So what are the benefits of 3D? Why do we want to use 3D? The big problem with microscopes is the depth of field problem. Microscopes, uh, light microscopes, have a tiny depth of field, only a thin part of the specimen is seen in focus at any one time. With our system, you can view much thicker specimens, so you don't have to make, for example, five micron sections. You can put a whole mount in, you can put pretty much any object in there, and you can look at things more than 100 microns or so, and all in sharp focus. Um, you saw in that last image, it was 750 microns from top to bottom. So why 3D? Because 3D is revolutionizing the industrial microscopy world. If you look now at the two companies, Keyens and Hyrox, their 3D microscopes have clearly proven the need for 3D technology. They're, they are wonderful microscopes and they show uh, much of what you can see, what we do in 3D, but it's much more expensive. We have a, a system that will go right onto your own microscope and it will improve your diagnosis. It'll increase productivity by seeing things in 3D and it reveals hidden depth information which you wouldn't see otherwise. Uh, who are the customers? There are academic customers and industrial customers, uh, things like geology and archeology, span uh, the food industry, any general QC or an inspection, any company that's making just about anything needs a microscope. And if they're looking at real world objects, they really need a 3D microscope. And this is an easy way to turn your existing microscope into 3D. So here are some examples application examples. In geology, this is what you'd see from a regular 2D microscope uh, using your 2D uh, of, of a, a meteorite. Now here with our microscope or our add-on system, now it becomes totally three-dimensional and you clearly see what's there. Uh, here's an example of geology. Again, this is um, a little bit of moon dust that uh, I was given a grant by NASA to look at. This is from the Sea of Tranquility and that's a 2D microscope. And here it is in 3D. You clearly see it, all this crystal structure, clearly all the way through this, this beautiful little bit of moon dust. This is in microelectronics. This is looking with your 2D microscope, and now you can upgrade it to look like this. So you clearly see what's happening from the top to the bottom. Here's a, it works in polarization microscopy. So this is a 2D picture. Uh, of a sugar crystal crystallizing, and now it is here in 3D. This is Velcro. So for manufacturing, as I say, whatever you're making, uh, it's, it's really good to see it in 3D. This is Velcro in 3D. Those little hooks uh, get uh, caught up in the in the uh, the loops of the Velcro, and that's how Velcro works. So now I'm going to show you a couple of stereo or a few stereo slides. So if you have your red green glasses on, put the red on your left hand side, and you'll see the power of your human of the human brain to understand depth information. It's really quite amazing. So right here we use a regular paper and printing. That little bit of that's a laser printing, and that is about the size of a period on a piece of paper. I printed the word 3D. I reduced it to the size of a period print it on a piece of paper and put it under a microscope. Now you can see that the paper itself isn't really flat, that the decoration of the, of the carbon uh, particles on the paper is quite three-dimensional. So something you might think is not three-dimensional at all is really quite three-dimensional. This is the Velcro, but this is seen through um, the uh, stereo 3D apparatus. Here again, that's the microelectronics seen in stereo 3D. This is some etching 
uh, on a gold plate. And you can see the etching tools. You can see exactly how the etching tool is working and where it's got some imperfections in that, clearing out the groove that it's making. This is a penny. Uh, and if you look a little bit closer at the penny, uh, this is a fungus gnat, a little tiny fungus gnat. Um, and this is that die cutter that we looked at before in 3D. And here's something that's very unique that we do. This is the die cutter, and we do what I call 4D. And what it allows you to do is see stereo 3D and motion 3D simultaneously. So it's almost like a hologram to be able to see them both together. Here's, a, here's another example of 4D. This is some olivine sand grains, and if you have your glasses, you're not only seeing it moving in, in 3D, you're actually seeing the stereo in 3D. So you're interrogating the specimen from left and right through the stereo, and you're also interrogating it from up and down through the rotation. So it gives you more information. You can remove the 3D glasses now. So the next question is, how do you set up the system and how might it work on your microscope? So basically it's easy to set up. It uses the prior scientific focus drive um, and the focus drive has a sleeve at the end. So this, this uh, let's see my cursor here, that sleeve there at the end, here's a, on the bottom, that sleeve fits over the coarse focus of your microscope. So depending on what microscope you have, you use, you use a different sleeve here. And then that's the motor drive there. And once that's attached to the focus, the coarse focus, the motor drive moves in and, and creates uh, contact with the fine focus. So here it is on this Olympus microscope. Uh, that's the fine focus, and now you uh, attach that to the focus, and there you go. It's as, pretty much as easy as that, and that's the control box, and the cold control box then hooks up to the computer, which runs the confocal microscope. So what you do is you download. All you need to have is the, is the prior scientific focus drive, and then you download the Edge 3D Pen Focal software, and this is the minimum configuration for your PC. It needs a Windows 10 computer with you know, some fairly uh, good uh, memory and a good graphics board, um, and you should be set to go. Uh, so we also have an optional 3D oblique illuminator, which gives added capability to your system in several ways, and I want to discuss this a little bit. So this is our prior edge 3D, 2D illuminator. It'll work as a 2D illuminator, as a standard illuminator, so you don't have to take it on and off, or it works in 3D as well. It's available now, uh, and it will go either on a vertical illuminator for uh, reflected light, as you see on the left-hand side, or, or it'll go onto uh, a transmitted light microscope uh, for transmitted light. Uh, all you simply do is take off the existing illuminator and you screw on the new Edge 3D illuminator. So what are the benefits of this illuminator? It's quite unique. So you'll see now on this GUI, on this graphic user interface, you'll see on the left-hand side, it is now, the, now the computer is controlling the camera, the lights, and the, and the, uh, the focus drive. So you'll see that there are four lights. There are four LEDs, and they're coming from four oblique angles, from northwest, northeast, southeast, and southwest. And you can control all or any of these lights. What this system does is it enhances contrast, it increases resolution, it improves depth of field, and produces real-time 3D stereo. And I want to show you some of how this works. So the illuminator, first of all, is a powerful contrast contrast enhancement system. It illuminates the specimen, produce highlights and shadows to create the contrast you need to see something, for example, especially things that are not stained. It does particularly well with unstained specimens. So this is a radial area, uh, and this is looking with bright field. Now, as soon as you put our illuminator on and you look with one oblique light, look at the difference between the radial area here and here. All of a sudden, you can clearly see the structure of all those little microscopic organisms. So here it is with the illuminator. So this is the, the graphic user interface. You can see here that this slider at the top 
uses all the lights. You can turn all the lights on, all the lights off. That's like losing a 2D microscope. And as you slide that to the right, all of these go with it. They're all ganged together. So when you use all the lights, each of the northwest, uh, each of these four lights goes up and down with it. So right now we're using all the lights and you can see closer to this radiolarium. But now look what happens when we use just the northwest light. Now just, you see, all the lights are off. Now we're just using the northwest light. And now you can really see what's happening there. It makes a huge difference in the visibility. And also you can make a 3D rotational uh, little movie clip out, uh, out of it very, very quickly. Also, the 3D illuminator increases resolution, and it does this by allowing the objective lens to capture higher order diffraction wavelengths. Now, I'd like to explain this to you just a little bit, because by saying it increases resolution, you'll say, well, the limit of resolution was, you know, discovered 130 years ago by Ernst Abbey, and that is true. Uh, and this is the resolution formula for the limit of resolution. So D is the distance between two objects, that can be seen is, uh, is so that you can still see the two objects as two objects and not one object. So as that distance finally gets really small, you can only you see those two objects as one object. So that's what D represents. And the formula is well established, 1.22 times lambda, which is the wavelength of light, divided by the numerical aperture of the objective plus the numerical aperture of the condenser. Now, most formulas say two times NA. But they, uh, that's not the most accurate way of saying it because you have to make sure that your numerical aperture of your objective is as good as the numerical aperture of your condenser in order to get full system working to its fullest. So what this means is, is the diffraction of light, the wavelength of light and the numerical aperture is the limiting factor. But it's actually the diffraction of light that's the limiting factor. So here you see on the left, You've got these muscle cells, striated muscle cells, and you see all these striations. If you were to take the eyepiece out of the right-hand side of your of your uh, of your uh, viewing tube and look down the back of the objective, this is what you'd see. When you're looking at this, these cells on the left, if you take the eyepiece out, you're going to see the zero-order diffraction wavelet, the first order, and the second order. What happens is is that the objective lens creates a diffraction pattern that codes for this image. And in fact, a Fourier transform of this diffraction pattern creates this image. You can literally see this happen. If you hold a piece of paper, if you take the um, head off your microscope and you have this all set up and you hold a white piece of paper in a dark room, you're gonna see this and you get as close to the lens as you can. You're gonna see this diffraction pattern. It will be a little bit blurry because you're not. And as you move that piece of paper up, it literally transforms itself into that image. It morphs into that image. Um, so what you're seeing is these diffraction wavelengths are needed in order to, to um, resolve an image. So let's look at something that's right on the limit of resolution of light microscope. This is uh, uh, Fur sigma angulatum. And these little dots, these little spacings are half micron spacings. That's pretty close to the resolution of a light microscope. So if you take the eyepiece out of the right hand side and look down the back of the objective, that's the zero order. And this is the first order. Now, these objects, the, the, we're not seeing the second or third order because what happens is as the spacing of the objects gets smaller and smaller, the wave, the, the diffraction wavelets separate farther and farther. So at one point, the object spacing gets so small that the diffraction wavelets are not seen by the objective lens. So let me show you an example of this. If you look at this diatom Amphipura pellucida, it has markings that are 250 by 200 nanometers. That's, that's, you have to have a really good microscope to be able to see that. In fact, you have to use oblique illumination to see it. So this is what it would look like if you used uh, let's say a dry lens or, or, or a lens. So because you're not getting the wavelets, all you're getting is the outline of this diatom. Now, if you use a 1.4 NA objective and a 1.4 NA oil condenser, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see these lines. And those are the 250, micro, uh, 250 nanometer lines. But what happened, so what happened on this one here, let's look at this one where you don't see any of the uh, markings. What's happened is the objective aperture, if you look at this little diagram, is not large enough 
to see the first order wavelength. But if you, on the other hand, tilt the, uh, tilt the beam or use oblique illumination with this tilted beam, now the zero order is turned is over to the right and now you can see the first order. And all of a sudden, you can see the 200 nanometer spacings. You can see, in fact, that each of these lines is made up of dots that are 200 nanometers apart. And you can see this in the objective lens. So using the, uh, 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 the, the Pleuris Sigma Angulatum, and if you look at here, you see that the wavelet, I brought the, by using oblique illumination, the zero order is way out here. So now we're getting the first order and the second order wavelet. And now I've added a second one. This is called multiple oblique illumination. So these two oblique illuminators interfere with one another to create a diffraction pattern that gives you even more information throughout the XY plane. So another interesting thing, which seems sort of contradictory, is that the illuminator also increases the depth of field. Well, how can that be? Because what happens is this. Normally, let's say you're looking at your microscope and your condenser lens is open, and you close your condenser lens. You know when you can close the iris of your condenser lens, the contrast and depth of field of the image increases. That's because you're increasing the F number. The cone of illumination is now smaller, so you've increased the F number of your system. But look what happens if you do this obliquely instead of centrally. If you do this obliquely, now you have the same cone angle, which gives a higher F number, but because you're oblique, you have not decreased the resolution of the microscope. In fact, you've slightly increased the resolution of the microscope and increased the depth of the field. One of the great things is the depth of field and contrast increase allows you to very clearly see unstained cells, uh, tissue cultures, all kinds of stuff that need um, standing. So look at this. This is on a reflected light microscope. This is a little bump on the surface of a piece of metal. And that's using a uh, 2D microscope with all of its lights. But look what happens if you use the oblique illuminator. Now you have more depth of field and you've created shadowing and highlighting. And you can you can decide what angle to, uh, to sort of create that shading and highlighting. There's from a different angle. So you see as you create shading and highlighting for different angles, you see different aspects of the structure that you're looking at. So I think we're getting close to winding it up here. I, uh, if there's any questions, I'd like to take them. But I know that our first question usually is, what is the cost of the panfocal microscopy system? Uh, so here is our price list. Um, it consists of the panfocal software, which you download on your computer. That's 4000 And for compound microscopes, you use the prior, the prior scientific Z-Focus drive. That's 3400 If you have a stereo microscope, it needs more uh, torque in the drive. So you don't get this drive. You get the drive here for the stereo microscope. That costs uh, about $600 more. And if you have a measuring microscope, uh, one of the Nikon NM400 measuring microscopes, um, there's a system for that as well. And then the optional 3D illuminator, you can add that on if you wish. Uh, when you select and buy the focus drive for the upright microscope, you'll see that there's a list of my, uh, list of microscopes that you choose the um, the appropriate sleeve so that it fits over the coarse focus of your microscope. Uh, that doesn't that comes with the system. If if you do not see uh, your microscope listed there, uh, we can easily 3D print a sleeve that will uh, allow your microscope to be compatible with the system. Uh, so if there's any questions, uh, yes. So a question is, can you get height measurements in the Z direction? And the answer is yes. So as you focus the stage up and down uh, and you see where you're focused, you can go from one place to the next, and the height measurement is read out in microns at the stage position. Um, there's a little a little uh, window in the software that shows your stage position wherever you happen to be, and it's always showing you where where the stage is. So you get a direct readout of exactly where the stage is in microns. So you can measure from one point to the next, and with our measuring color depth map, you can 
uh, also at a quick glance measure in X, Y, and Z, dire and Z direction at a quick glance. Uh, so, uh, Al, uh, if you want to wrap it up or if there's any other questions, uh, can you take it? Oh, and also I forgot to say, if you, if you uh, have um, signed up for this webinar, you have a 10% discount on the Edge Panfocal software. I just want to let you know that and we'll send you a, uh, an email to verify that. So Al? Well, thank you very much, Gary. Uh, well done. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to see what the microscope uh, you've created will do. Um, please join us uh, next week. Uh, we'll have another presentation on how this microscope performs in the forensic uh, science arena. Again, uh, this is Al Koritz. Uh, you can uh, contact me directly at uh, Electromicroscopy Sciences if you have any further questions on this microscope. Uh, we'll be distributing a copy of this presentation uh, so you can review it at your leisure. Thanks again for your time and be safe out there. Good day.